What's going on is Anton from AntonDaniels.com. Again, I'm switching it up a little bit, adding a little bit of variety to the channel um, for a couple of different reasons. Number one, I've been getting a lot of requests, even phone calls from people that's asking me about insight into opening up their own restaurant and to give them an update on my current restaurant. In addition to that, I just want to give you guys a little bit more value. I know it's cool and all to be entertaining and you know, because I live my life like an open book, you guys get to travel with me, you get to go different places, you get to see and experience different things that normal people in normal circumstances wouldn't normally get to experience. And if you can get a little bit of insight from me in order to help you become a better version of yourself, then I think that's worth having a conversation about. But anyway, as you can see, I'm here at the restaurant. You guys don't really get to see what goes on behind the scenes unless you follow me on Instagram. I'm here in the kitchen to have this conversation about what it's been like to own my own restaurant for a year. For the people that's new to the channel, let me bring you up to speed on what's going on and how I got into the restaurant business in the first place. My family owned restaurants, specifically my grandmother, owned restaurants 20, 25, 30 years ago. As a user experience expert, I'm always fascinated by the idea of how things can be improved, how things are changing, and what kind of impact I can have depending on how I can change things to make it more viable for whoever the customers are, the workers, so on and so forth. Literally, I hatched this idea over a weekend. I'm having a conversation with my grandmother on a Saturday night. She was just giving me her insight into what it was like to own a restaurant, all of the pitfalls. I basically got her blessing and then I had been having a conversation prior to that with my father on and off because he had always been fascinated by the idea of owning a restaurant himself. I made the decision Sunday morning. Monday, I went and found a location, signed a lease. Tuesday, I had ordered equipment. By Thursday, I had that equipment starting to get delivered. Talking about refrigerators, ovens, freezers, three bay sinks, racks, the whole nine yards. I don't believe in doing a lot of planning. I believe in jumping in head first and that prevents me from turning back. It alleviates me from letting fear take over whatever decision that I would have made and having regrets that I never did it before. I can't live with the idea that I never actually tried or I never actually experienced it for myself. Because like I always say, life is about experiences and not stuff. Fast forward through the build out and everything like that. First day, I'm super nervous because nothing goes how you think it's gonna go in your head. So. I didn't even think it would be a lot of people. I didn't do a whole lot of marketing and things like that. I just kind of told you know the people that was following me on Facebook and Instagram and even my YouTube channel and stuff like that. It was crazy. Like the lines was out the door. If you have any following, any marketing expertise, if there's any built up, pent up demand in a specific area where you're opening at, where nothing new has come in in quite a while or nothing like this, it's gonna be crazy. But I certainly did not sleep for the first month because I was in here. I mean, I would probably get like at max three hours of sleep a day, but I was in here cleaning and repairing and ordering and trying to figure it out because when it comes down to it, you gotta get that product, you gotta get stuff clean. You're gonna be dealing with employees and things breaking and this not operating the way it was and that plug got blown and so on and so forth. I had some ride or dies with me as far as like my brother and my wife and my mother and people like that that you know really had my back. And then there was a lot of people that flaked out on me. Whole nother conversation, possibly a whole nother video depending on what you guys want me to talk about. If you want me to continue to go into details about what it's like to own a restaurant. Here's the big takeaway. It's not as luxurious as you think it is as far as like just owning your own business and then you don't have to show up or you can just go and collect money. It's no sick days. If you are tired, you just gotta get up and go. If something is wrong, you just gotta figure it out. It just is what it is because people don't care about that. People don't care about excuses. Think about it like a bank, right? And Nobody cares about what the problems are as it relates to what they're dealing with behind the scenes on their systems and the tellers and all of that. My money went in there. It should be in there by this time. I want access to it. If you say you're going to open at a certain time or you know you say this is on the menu, it's going to have to be there. So no matter what, you got to do what you got to do, which completely upended my lifestyle because you know I had gotten to a comfortable place where I was traveling and I had freedom. I can come and go as I please. I wasn't bound by 
any brick and mortar facility, whereas I've created and bought and sold other businesses and ran other businesses before, but nothing that I had to be in a brick and mortar facility or I had to deal with the things that come with having a brick and mortar facility, the air conditioning, one of the ovens had went out. It was absolutely crazy, it was chaotic. Somehow, even though I had never had experience running a restaurant before, and again, I had help from my wife because she's ran restaurants before and my mother's ran the restaurants for my grandmother and stuff like that before, but you know, me as the owner and the person that was ultimately responsible for it, I just wasn't used to being required to deal with a lot of the things that I had to deal with. Plus, at the time, my dad had just passed away and all of that, but I didn't have time to mourn or grieve or anything like that. It was just like, go, go, go. Don't matter what life is throwing at you, the customers don't care that your father passed. They want their food. You said you was gonna be open on this specific date. Make that date. And that's exactly what I did. A lot of you that have been to the restaurant know that we sell soul food. Mac and cheese, meatloaf, um, mashed potatoes and gravy, collard greens, ribs, catfish, whiting, the whole nine yards. And we don't like have certain things on the menu on certain days. We sell everything every day. In a year in, I think that soul food is probably one of the hardest restaurants that you can open. And I say that because not only do you have so many different things every day, but everybody has had soul food differently. Some people like salt, some people like vinegar, some people don't. Some people like heavy seasoning. Listen, if you don't like a lot of soul in your food, if you don't like a lot of seasoning, if you don't like that heavy flavored, and it's just not gonna be for you. We not bland. That's not what we do here. We have a lot of seasoning and a lot of flavor in our stuff, and we use five different cheeses in our mac and cheese the whole nine yards, but a lot of people have had it a lot of different ways. So, you know, it's not like getting a burger. A burger is a burger. You can throw different ingredients on it and you can, you know, make sure it's juicy by doing this or whatever like that. But a burger is a burger. Fries is fries. Soul food is different. You know, we don't just have one side of fries or tater tots or some crap like that. Like, you know, the candy M's got to be peeled every day. Collard greens got to be cooked every day. It's a very difficult thing to master but I think that I figured it out in that I've been able to put processes in place. And that's why you've never seen a chain soul food restaurant. But I've been able to put processes in place where I think that I pretty much mastered what it takes to run a soul food restaurant. I'll give you guys a few takeaways from running a restaurant business in general, outside of a specific palette of food, um, just the restaurant in general don't expect to be profitable immediately. If you're looking to depend on restaurant profits in order to sustain a specific lifestyle that you would have been used to had you been working for somebody else or you were working for somebody else and then you quit to start your own thing, you are in for a rude awakening. Luckily for me, I never did that, but essentially what you're doing is you're working for everybody else. You're working for the customers, you working for the people that work for you because no matter what, you gotta make sure that the paychecks is there on Friday. It's a completely different animal when other people are depending on you for their survival, for their paycheck, for their success. And I decided to pay well above minimum wage. When I first started, I hired a lot of family. That wasn't necessarily a good idea, but I also hired people from the neighborhood that were, oddly enough, very eager to work here but then I found out later on that they actually were from some of my competition that were here to sabotage me. But I found that out really quickly and I solved that problem. <laughs> it's crazy. I mean, the restaurant business is extremely cutthroat. You're talking about a pool of customers that can spend their money anywhere they want to. And everybody is competing for that business. In addition to you got food prices that fluctuate. You can't control that. You can't just adjust the price of your menu when you want to. And there's a lot of adaptation in the restaurant industry, just like any other industry, just like the cab industry with Uber and so on and so forth. Now you have delivery services. We've implemented Uber Eats, DoorDash, Grubhub, Postmates, in addition to like the local delivery systems. You know, you have to be careful with that stuff because profit margins, the cut that they take, that's negotiable. Again, additional information, 
that I will put out or I will have a conversation about if you guys want to know more about um, business and the restaurant industry, all that other type of stuff. Y'all let me know in the comments. But really, it's really adaptation, where you want to spend your marketing dollars, how can you manage costs, and can you make the tough decisions that's going to ensure your profitability and ensure that your business and restaurant is successful. Two things that we focus on is customer service and making sure that we have good food. I don't care what happens, what the circumstances are, what happened at home, you treat people with respect even better than they deserve to be treated because it's some people that's gonna come in here and they're gonna give you a hard time just because, because they're having a bad day. You treat these people like gold. That's what we do here at my restaurant and I fired people. I've literally fired people for not treating the customers how they're supposed to be treated. And then the food, have people driving all the way down from Flint, all the way up from Taylor. I'd put our food against any other soul food restaurant. I'm confident about that. Another thing that I think is important is you have to be really hands-on. Again, if you think you're just gonna be vacationing and things are just gonna run really well, I have to plan so far out in advance. I gotta make sure that it's somebody here to make sure that the registers get swapped out that there's enough food, that people are doing what they're supposed to do. Of course, I got security cameras and I can kind of check to make sure that things are running the way that it's supposed to be ran. But, you know, still, you're not here specifically. So, you know, you have to put a lot of processes in place to ensure that the business continues to run without a hitch as if you're here. Like I said, I'm really hands-on because even though you train people and now I'm starting to get people in place that really, really, really are good at what they do, um, nobody is gonna love it like you. Nobody is gonna love your business as much as you love your business or grow it the way that you grow it. I think another thing that is very important is marketing. How you choose to spend your marketing dollars or your time in 2019, 20 and beyond is incredibly important because like I said, Adaptation is key, and I don't care what industry you in, I don't care if you're in banking, if you're in the service industry, if you're in retail. You see that Amazon is crushing at least 30% of the businesses that they're in the market with. Like, it's, it's no mistake, like, the data is key. I can predict exactly how much I'm going to make on each day of the week. Again, another conversation that I can go into depth about, but you guys let me know if you want me to have these conversations. Let me know in the comments. And make sure you hit me up on Instagram and Facebook. It's incredibly important that you pay attention to the data as far as like how much people are spending, what they're buying. I can look and see exactly how much catfish I sold and what combination that people usually um, buy catfish with. Considering that I opened in the middle of the year last year, so I opened in June, considering how much I spent to develop and put into this business, because again, we basically gutted it. It used to be a cash advance place and we had to do everything all over. I mean, I even fell off the roof and all of the new equipment and everything like that, like I'm really, really hands-on. Projections for this year being a full year in business, we should be solidly profitable. So that's a good thing. And I have some really, really big things on the horizon. No matter what the business that you're in, you're going to have people rooting against you. You're gonna have people that doubt you, don't believe in you. You're gonna have some secret fans that are going to project their doubt onto you because they secretly wanna be and do the things that you're doing. They, like people don't have the courage to be able to sink the type of money and dedication and really take the plunge into doing something like opening up a restaurant. I mean, it's a big deal to spend your own money to build out a whole restaurant for yourself. Again, I don't have any partners. Um, I don't have anybody that owns me. I don't have any bank loans or anything like that. Like, this was my money that I sunk into it. Things are going well. Again, I had a lot of people that fell off, a lot of people that were family that I hired, that I put on, that flaked out on me and things like that. But again, you're gonna have some ups and downs. And one thing that I think that owning this restaurant has done for me is it's really separated the people that are really down for the cause or really dedicated and believe in what it is that I'm doing here. 
and the people that's not. I think things are going really well. They say at least 30% of restaurants close within the first year. Definitely beat that. We're growing every month. Again, you're gonna have the hell week, and then you're gonna have the honeymoon phase, and then after that, which is roughly two to three months after you open, that's when the real management come in as far as determining how the business is gonna run, how much labor you need, how much your food cost is really impacting your bottom line, all of the details as it relates to the restaurant. But for me, I feel like it's worth it. If you guys wanna see more of these videos, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell so you can get notifications when I drop new videos. I think that I'm gonna start mixing in the business videos as far as giving you guys insight into what it takes to run different businesses as it relates to restaurants, online businesses, so on and so forth. But you guys let me know. If you guys don't wanna see any more of these videos, then I won't drop any of these and I'll just focus on streets of Detroit and traveling and real talk videos and things like that. If you guys wanna know more about business, I'll start mixing these in along with all those other videos. I appreciate you guys for taking this journey with me again. It's been a really, really great year. Looking forward to what's coming next and I have some big announcements and some big things in the pipeline. Make sure you guys holler at me at AntonDaniels.com. I appreciate you. I'll check you guys out later. Peace.